Round one! Let's play first. That is defs what our deck wants to do. Keep this all day. Get out there, buddy! I better turn my sound down just in case it's super loud for you guys. I never quite know how these things record. Once I recorded a... Uh, what was I playing? Something! And the sounds from the game were super loud. <laughs> so I can just kill this thing? Oh. Get out there, buddy. I guess I should know these cards. <laughs> Come on, it's expensive. Give me a break. Jerm. There's a listener who sent me a great um, token that was like me as a germ token when I was like looking all sick because I was sick for a couple weeks after GP Vegas. It was pretty sweet. Well, now I can start pinging for two. This is artifacts, I'm sure. Maybe they have our cranial plating. So we're going to bring in that smash 100%. Like I said, that's fine main board uh, in, this, in this set. It's just that I was greedy and wanted to play all my dudes. Hopefully we get another swamp next turn. That'd be amazing. Now I'm like, should I just block that stupid Gus Skimmer? But I'm not going to. That card's really, really annoying. So now we've got what they call a race. But this makes me feel a little bit better about this, but... And also these trade now. <laughs> if I was interested in such a deal. Which, you know, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not. It is early over here in Minnesota recording this for you, for you humans. So I'm a little tired, but I'm uh, slamming some sweet, sweet Diet Mountain Dew DMD. Because that's how I do. Our opponent has gone into a coma. Oh! Didn't even want to trade. Hmm. Wouldn't it be funny if I had that third fire slinger? Nailed it! I don't know what shenanigans are going on over here. Um, but I'm just going to attack with this. I don't know if I should be attacking with this as well. I just have like nothing to back it up with. If this doesn't hit though, yeah, it's kind of sad. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> just give that thing flying. Sure. Let's 
stupid guest skimmer. Oh, duh, I could have done it anyway. <laughs> I haven't played this deck before! Is it obvious? For being so early in my neighborhood, it is sure noisy out. There's airplanes, there's people on my street. There it is. So that gives plus three plus old right now. Which is, as they say, really good on this card. So that would be 10 damage. You go to 7. I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> I mean, I do have the outcasts. That's true. <laughs> now they're probably going to chump here. Let's see if they do or not. Yeah. So I gotta do this instead. just be throwing away our slinger here or just taking you know 12 we shall see by the way uh, our last episode was really fun um, of magic the amateuring we teamed up with the guys from command zone who do a podcast on Commander. So if you didn't listen to that episode, I would encourage it. Um, it was a lot of fun. You don't even have to listen to our episode because we were also on their podcast, The Command Zone, which um, they doctored up some of our pre-con Commander decks that Megan and I have. And it was just a ton of fun recording with them because they have pretty much the same sense of humor as us. <laughs> And we basically were joking, like, are we the same people just in like a mirror universe? <laughs> so it was it was a lot of fun. So check that out, both the command zone, their episode, and our episode from this past week. You can see the date down here in my computer. Bloop. Take a casual twelve, I don't know. They did not equip, notably, so something is going to get played. Oh, great. On my turn. Barf. Could just take 12. 
What if they have another equipment? Like a vapor snag or a repeal or something. Oh. Gonna take my vampires. How dare you! <laughs> oh, little did they know. What I have just drawn. So this is almost like, why don't I just evoke this card? Um, it's really not going to do, it's going to do the exact same thing either way. Because there's they're not going to play out another guy pre-combat, I wouldn't imagine. Dang it! So it has to target my dude? That's kind of funny. That was the biggest blowout I maybe have ever experienced on my end in Modern Masters. So, we gonna die. I mean, we have a lot of stuff that we could draw to get us out of this, but we only have one chance to do so. I got one chance not to die in this game! <clears throat> sure. Now my gosh darn proliferate card doesn't even work. Okay. We did. Good thing we have some good options playing against this deck. Including beep 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 beep. This guy. Smash. <laughs> yeah. Let's do this. I lowered our curve a little bit. Whoa! Gross. This hand is also a barf hole. If we draw land though, it is not the worst thing in the world. Five, 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 five. They haven't even got a six yet. <laughs> So I know some of you who uh, recently subscribed to this channel thanks to the professor giving us a, an awesome shout out on his YouTube channel. Um, probably like 
you know, our videos like my roommate is a planeswalker, that sort of thing, our sketch our sketch videos. And we would actually love to make more of those and we're um, considering a new series um, that, we, that we might be working on soon. Um, but man, is it a lot of work. <laughs> uh, especially when we both have, you know, three jobs. I'm including this as a job. So uh, hopefully in the future we'll get some more content like that up there for you guys. Um, you know, we're working with various partners right now and hopefully that'll happen sometime soon in the future. Um, but you know, it is it is pretty it is a pretty huge time commitment. So just hang in there. It's gonna happen. Meanwhile, we'll try and keep you satiated with these uh, draft videos. Once again, our opponent has fallen into a coma. So ah! excuse me, I'm so tired. Okay, I'll take this opportunity to chat at you guys about um what we're going to talk about in our next episode. Um, I don't really want to talk about it too much, but I do want to talk about how I'm feeling right now. Because um, I want to get all touchy-feely. Uh, so, Megan recently posted an article which basically became one of the biggest firestorms <laughs> in magic news this year. So, somehow. <laughs> uh, surprisingly. Which was just, she wanted to write about you know women playing magic. And there have been a few articles out recently. And it wasn't like she was jumping on the bandwagon writing it. She had been writing it for more than a year. Um, and she just is a fucking perfectionist. So she like would send it to me all the time and be like, look at this, what do you think about this? She was so nervous about writing it and publishing it uh, because she knew that she could potentially get some backlash about it because somehow <laughs> saying that, you know, women should be more visible in the community is a controversial topic. Um, and so I was really proud of her when she finally published it because it was kind of a brave thing to do knowing that some people might start yelling at her. Um, the feedback to the article was like pretty positive so I was uh, really happy about that. It was about 50 positive, 50 percent negative on Reddit but that's you know pretty good for Reddit which is fairly awful a lot of the time. Um, but Then, like, on Friday, which was a few days ago for me right now in this point in history, somebody posted a rebuttal to her article, which is, like, shocking to me that somebody would say, no, <laughs> like, what you, woman, wrote about women in magic in your personal experiences, and those of your friends note me, have, have been through, you know, is not right. <laughs> and calling for, you know, more visibility of women in the game and just like meant to be more cognizant of the way that they act towards women during tournaments, etc. You know, is you shouldn't be done, and you're just widening the gap. And instead, we should do nothing and pretend it doesn't exist, and then I'll be all, everything will be better. Um, and uh, yeah, this thing blocks all of this. This thing can't block at all. So if I play this. Then I can probably reliably play Blood Ogre the next turn. Because I don't think they would block it, but maybe they will knowing that we're playing Bloodthirst. I don't, I'm not sure. And anyway, the article was just awful and terrible and made me so upset. Like, and I've read comments from people who are like, oh, you know, they just want something to be upset about. They just want a reason to get mad and yell and whatever. And I assure you that that's not true. I'd rather we didn't have to write about this at all. I would rather I, you know, didn't have to be upset all day at work and all day on Saturday and like be emotionally drained because and like think, oh, I should just quit, which I didn't realistically, you know, actually think, but sometimes it seems like it'd be easier because then I have, wouldn't worry about being accepted and and everything. This is disgusting. We got to evoke this spite bellows for sure. Unfortunately. Because this can fly.
Might as well swing since I can't block. But we're going to lose more life here. So anyway, we'll get into the show, but into it, you know, actually like legitimate arguments about why the article was super hurtful and in my opinion, really wrong-headed. Um although I don't think he was, you know, trying to do any harm, but even if your intent isn't to do harm, sometimes you really can if you're uninformed about what you're talking about, which he was, because he's a dude and he can't know what my experiences are. It's just impossible, right? Because <laughs> he's not living in my body. Um, so I was super hurt by everything and thankfully Mark Rosewater and like LSV and a bunch of people on Twitter like Doc and the professor came out and and supported us and the guys from Loading Ready to Run and other ladies in the community, uh, Athena, came out and said, you know, you know, we we support you and and it, and it, it was it was nice to get that from everybody. So it's obviously something that's still on my mind and I'm like still worrying about and everything and. I don't know if I can even survive this nonsense. I suppose I could have tried attacking with it. Anyway, I just kind of rambled there. It's hard to talk about an end-play game at the same time, <laughs> turns out. But I just want to say if anybody, you know, was angry at the fact that Star City Games took it down because they thought, oh, well, it's discussion, you shouldn't censor. Um, Star City Games, you know, it's a business, and it was really bad for their business, I think, you know, to keep it up there. Not because it was, like, a strong political viewpoint, but, but, but because it was the you know, because it was it was hurtful towards women. Oh boy, we have just not been able to get a leg up in these games at all, despite having like a really aggressive deck. But as you can see, this person is playing a lot of these um, two drops. That and like one drops that aren't like quote unquote good cards. That's what you gotta do in artifacts. Oh, we staying alive. Fine. You win. Uh, all right. We'll try this game. We'll try this deck again in the next couple rounds. Um, this is uh. Swiss. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see you back here, see if this deck can get it together next two rounds, and um, I'll try <laughs> I'll try to be in a better mood about everything. <laughs> talking about this stuff uh, kind of got me a little, a little shaky. So, yeah, uh, we'll talk about it more intelligently on our show, which will be released on Tuesday, which may be the same day this video is released. Who knows? So, coming up Tuesday from this date, I'll listen to our show, we'll talk about it better. Okay, see you back here for round two.